It's 4.35 p.m. and I'm in an annual review with my line manager. Due to an abrupt staff shortage during my onboarding period, I was tasked with the opportunity to perform a dual role in my department. And the conversation is going well. My line manager compliments my ability for juggling two roles in the past six months. As we wrap up, she asks if I have any questions. I'm saying to myself, why yes, a big one. <laughs> And I'm nodding, I'm smiling, and blurt out, how can I qualify for a promotion? <laughs> Talk about bad timing. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, did I just say this out loud? My heart is pounding. But I hold my composure. She pauses and says, Ashley, we haven't been able to grant anyone a promotion, a pay raise in over a year. But don't worry, your job is safe. Safe. In that moment, my bright smile went to this blank stare. I was disappointed. Not only did I feel like I just embarrassed myself, but I didn't receive the answer I was hoping for, again. I thanked her for her time. And as I walked out of her office, I sat in my car what felt like hours just thinking. Because as a child, I believed if you work hard, your leadership would recognize your efforts. But I wanted more. And although I love my career in healthcare, I realized that I wasn't excelling in the way that I was hoping to saying to myself, well, I mean, you can stay here or think about making a pivot. And the decision was not going to be easy because healthcare was all that I knew. What were my friends, my family going to think if I left now? And in that moment, I realized that I was the one that could make the decision. And I decided to pivot. And as I navigated my steps in my career, first in healthcare, then to data, to now working at a data role at a leading food and beverage company, <laughs> I didn't expect that. <laughs> and this process took a few years, but there were three questions that have helped me to make the steps in my pivot. And I encourage you to consider them as well. Question one. How can you turn your discomfort into an opportunity? Towards the tail end of my MBA program, I remember having several disagreements with one of my closest thesis advisors, Dr. Danny. And I was persistent in writing my thesis. I was stuck on plan A because writing a thesis would help me to land this higher paying job, a promotion, just benefits overall. I remember after class, I felt so inspired. I jotted down to her office and I said, I have this brilliant idea. I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to link my thesis to a public health initiative. I know no one's done that before. And she was so kind. I remember she just smiling at me and she's like, Ashley, you know, I think that you should pursue a consulting experience here at the business school. I'm thinking to myself, is she listening to me? I'm like, no, ma'am, that's not, that's not what I came here for. I said, I wanted to write my thesis. And she could sense my hesitation. In previous conversations, I told her that I was working two jobs and I was pursuing this accelerated business program. Again, didn't have any experience in this field. And I realized after going back and forth in my head, she's right, I am missing out on a crucial opportunity. I don't know what that is exactly going to mean, but she's seeing something in myself that I'm not considering. So I decided to take her advice. And fast forward into this consulting experience, I was able to find a connection between my public health background and my new data consulting experience. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. 
And in that moment, I'm thinking to myself, I've gained so much in a short amount of time. And as time is going on, I'm like, well, if you're thinking about, well, what happened to that thesis proposal you were talking about? Her guidance helped me to score a stellar grade on that as well. And as I'm reminded of how far I've come in this journey, especially with her planting the seeds and her encouragement to literally push me out of my comfort zone to see something that I didn't even have on the horizon, it helped me to plant the seeds in landing my first state role in medical education. Even to this day, her voice plays in my head saying, it's okay if you wanna change your mind and it's okay if you want to pivot into a different direction. Question two, how can you leverage your past experiences to reach this desired destination? In the summer of 2020, I met Sandy, a recent college grad with aspirations of getting into the data field, but she had a specialized engineering background. As we connected, she shared with me that she was concerned that others might not understand how her previous experiences ties into the data world. And I said, I know that story all too well. And I realized that we weren't the only ones that came across certain jobs, but we hesitated to apply. I was surprised to find out, to find out that when men and women are applying for, for specific roles, their search behaviors vary and that women and men are very uniquely different. Women are less likely to follow through and apply for the specific roles if they don't meet all of the qualifications. Why is that? It's likely due to this fear of feeling unqualified, especially when you're applying for promotional positions. But we didn't let that stop us. We worked on our confidence building. We ensured that we were able to optimize our online presence, do interview prep, and created an online portfolio of data projects all within her domain. So as we started to continue working together, she's doing her interviews, she was able to land a more fulfilling role, all with leveraging her previous experience. And as I think back on Sandy's role, it reminds me of my own journey because she is soaring right now. And she just needed that person in her ear to tell her to keep going. Oftentimes, if we're going through a non-traditional path, we face unique challenges. And we say, mm, I don't know what I'm going to do this yet. It feels too hard. It doesn't feel organic. But I encourage you to consider your previous experiences as valuable assets rather than hindrance. And my favorite question, how can you create a supportive community? As I was going through my own pivot chill journey, right, I'm looking on social media for resources for folks that look like me, and I really noticed a lack of representation. I was surprised to find out that women make up just 15% of data scientists and black folks make up just 3% of data analytics professionals. So where was I going to fit in? I realized in order for me to make this career transition, I needed a community. Fortunately for me, my community came in the form of a boot camp, online support groups for navigating data careers. And I'm grateful for my community. They made me who I am. Who I am. And even up until this moment, as I stand before you today, they've helped me to provide scholarships and mentorships to aspiring data girls and resources for hundreds of individuals who previously did not have experience in the data field and helped me to create my own platform. Recently, I've actually had the chance to meet a few person. And thinking of this particular moment, if my pivots haven't taught me anything from my own experiences to hearing others, we are constantly pivoting in this world. 
Humans take time. Humans do not invalidate our past experiences, and they do not mean that we must do them alone. In my 9 to 5, I'll tell you, I am always pivoting. <laughs> I'm learning to be a leader. I'm up-leveling my technical skills, but I'm, I'm wrestling with how to continue providing helpful resources to those who need them. And going through this journey, as I continue to navigate my pivots, whether it's in my career, my support groups, or ensuring that I can help others, especially underrepresented leaders, navigate these data spaces, I'm confident that as we all continue to pivot, these three questions are going to propel us in challenging times. So if you're a college student just trying to figure out where would you like to explore your interests? Or let's say that you're someone in the middle of your career who's just tired of hearing no, not yet. Or you're a veteran CEO who's just looking to see what else is out there for me. Today, I encourage you to consider where would you like to live in your life? This can be your career, your relationships, or your wellness choices for next month. As these opportunities continue to come across your path, don't be afraid to embrace this pivot. This is your time. Take it one step at a time, because if not anything else, change is inevitable, but your growth is optional.